happening tonight in Vancouver. A two-shot summer. It's how we will get a handle on this virus and move out of this path of the pandemic. BC is speeding up COVID-19 vaccine second doses. I would like to see everybody vaccinated with their second doses um, before the mask mandate was removed. July is the earliest British Columbians will go from mandatory to recommended mask wearing as our COVID-19 recovery continues. Coming up, what that means for businesses trying to protect employees and their customers. After about two weeks, that's when I started developing the symptoms of Bell's palsy. Jennifer Gibson knew she might see some side effects after getting the COVID vaccine, but she wasn't prepared for what came next. This is City News Everywhere. BC bumping up the timeline for second shots of COVID-19 vaccine. With the availability of supply, I anticipate that everyone will be able to have their second dose by the end of the summer. Those second shots now on an eight week interval from the first. That's half the 16 weeks originally planned at the start and down from the 13 weeks anticipated just a few weeks ago. It's a vital milestone to get out of this part of the pandemic. As we move into what we uh, hope will be step four in September, where people will be protected, going back to school, going back to university, and getting back into many other things that we want to do in our lives. Eight weeks the plan overall, but it could be a little different depending on first doses. If you got Pfizer first, you'll get Pfizer second, following the age-based and high-risk priority like first doses did. For those who got Moderna, it'll still be eight weeks, but there could be a twist because of supply. We expect it not to be common, but in some situations you may be offered a, a Pfizer vaccine instead of a Moderna for your dose two. Henry says that's been proven safe and effective. And then there's AstraZeneca. It made me feel hopeful in that, okay, we're starting at least. Jody Nuttall, one of about 100 in BC to get her AstraZeneca dose two as vials were set to expire. So many people have said to me, oh, you're so lucky. And I am, I definitely feel very fortunate, but I don't feel like I can really show it from the mountaintops either because there's so few people that have had the second shot yet. And those waiting on AstraZeneca are going to have to wait for that plan a bit longer. I anticipate we'll have more information by the end of next week to be able to provide advice to people who've received AstraZeneca so they can make an informed decision about receiving AstraZeneca as your second dose or receiving one of the mRNA vaccines. The bottom line, BC is expected to have a fully vaccinated population heading into a fully reopened province this fall. There are some areas with slower uptake on vaccines than others, the province working on that. Booster shots may be needed or not. And another COVID bad news brick could fall. I think I think I'll be wearing a helmet for at least another year <laughs> waiting for those bricks. For now, she's calling on everyone who can to get a shot because quite simply, it's the way out. It's how we will get a handle on this virus and move out of this path of the pandemic. For City News in Victoria, I'm News 1130's Lisa Yuzda. There are 378 new cases of COVID-19 across the province tonight, and seven more people have died in the last day. Indoor faith services with up to 50 people are now allowed to resume in BC as long as detailed safety plans are in place. Right now, as we're in this bridging period where we're still um, uh, having constraints on numbers and other uh, activities, particularly indoors, it has provisions for things like masking, etc. It does allow for um, small uh, funerals and baptisms as part of a religious service, but not at the moment uh, for weddings. Weddings are subject to uh, the, the same restrictions that we have on indoor gatherings. The province will also allow overnight camps in B.C. this summer. Canada is expecting 500,000 extra doses of the Moderna vaccine next week. The influx of shots comes as the manufacturer had struggled to meet its purchase orders previously agreed upon with the federal government. Moderna currently owes Canada at least 6.7 million doses by the end of June. The Massachusetts-based company has been struggling with its production lines and deliveries this spring have been lagging. Another 1.5 million doses are expected the week of June 14th. 
The federal government says Moderna is still promising to continue sending millions of doses next month, but there is little clarity on how many or when they will arrive. The wheels are turning on BC's restart plan, and that means by as early as July, wearing a face mask will become a recommendation and not mandatory. That could mean you might see people without face coverings in local retail spaces, and for some, that's a concern. My initial reaction was, what? Isn't it too soon? Karima Jivraj owns a Bosley's pet store in New Westminster. She expects the change to be a balancing act for her as she has to listen to employees, her head office and customers, all while following guidelines from public health. But I also have to take my cue from what my team is comfortable with. I am not going to do something that they are not comfortable with. I am not sure that by July 1st, all of my team will be vaccinated. Masks have been mandatory in B.C. since November of last year. During the announcement of B.C.'s restart plan on Tuesday, Dr. Bonnie Henry said that could become more of a personal choice in the weeks ahead. Greg Wilson is with the Retail Council of Canada. He acknowledges there will be anxiety as we take a step back. There's a lot of people who are going to be uncomfortable with co-workers or customers who don't wear, who aren't wearing masks, in, particularly immediately when that transition happens. Um, some people won't yet have had their second vaccination, and so they might be anxious for that reason. In Wilson's opinion, the best way to describe the change? The uh, mask is like a, an all-star defenseman, but the, uh, the vaccination is like an all-star goaltender. And so we've moved from having just a defenseman in front of the net to now having a great goaltender in front of the net with vaccinations. I don't know how I feel about walking around with everybody having no masks yet, just yet. This July 1st seems like it's just around the corner. Um, I will probably personally still wear my mask. Usually working with these is like I have a sauna in my face. <laughs> then sometimes it's really hard to breathe. I am practice my English, but sometimes it's like I can read the the the, the lipstick so it's difficult and me like why but for those who may be anxious about the shift dr bonnie henry has this piece of advice that even though the the legal mandate isn't there anymore that we will go back to using masks as an important piece of of keeping others safe showing respect particularly when we're in those settings where transmission can happen more easily Jivraj still plans to follow the usual sanitation protocols at her store, including having hand sanitizer at the door and disinfecting spaces as much as possible. She hopes customers everywhere will do their part. Uh, please be kind and patient with the retail workers. It's really hard on them. They're doing the best they can, given the guidelines. In Vancouver, Rhea Renouf, City News. I wanted to talk about it responsibly, I don't want to discourage people from getting vaccines. And strangely, I, I, I don't really want to discourage them from getting this one. Jennifer Gibson says she got the COVID vaccine because she wanted to see life in Canada get back to normal. But the Toronto woman wasn't prepared for what she saw when she looked in the mirror two weeks after getting her AstraZeneca shot. In the morning, I was just looking and I thought, gosh, something is weird with my face. And I thought, whatever, I slept funny, no big deal. And by the end of the day, my husband even, I was asking him, like, this is weird now. And even with kindness, he had to say, yes, it was. A phone consult with Gibson's doctor confirmed that she had developed Bell's palsy, a form of facial paralysis. So honestly, when they said Bell's palsy, it's, you know, devastating to look at half your face being paralyzed. But I, the little that I knew of Bell's palsy, I thought people don't die from that. So the fact that it wasn't something that I was going to not be around for my daughter later, you know, it's, it's dealable. It sucks, but it's dealable. Gibson is sharing her experience on Instagram to show people what vaccine side effects could potentially be like. You know, the, the reason why I got it is I wanted to get back to real life and I have friends who are fighting cancer and they can't get their treatments. Health Canada tracks adverse reactions to COVID vaccines and the most recent data shows 131 cases like Gibson's. Bell's palsy has been reported in clinical trials for all COVID vaccines approved in Canada, but also in patients who received a placebo or no vaccine. 
Epidemiologists say there just isn't enough to establish a causal link. There's always that background rate. So what's the rate at which this may have occurred? Um, unfortunately, anyway. Um, so for, uh, for example, for Bell's palsy, the rate is about 25 per 100,000. And when I calculate uh, the data here, that uh, rate is less than one per 100,000. Bell's palsy typically resolves itself within two to six months, but in some cases, can persist. Gibson says she started seeing some improvement in the last few days. But in the meantime, she hopes that by sharing her story, we can talk about the benefits and side effects of getting the shot. I thought we could go back to real life and, you know, help those who can't get it. Then this kind of nightmare will be over. But, you know, now I can say definitively that, yeah, there is a downside. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. Vancouver City Council has voted in favour of redesigning Commercial Drive as a pedestrian first corridor. What that might include is wider sidewalks, enhanced bike infrastructure and more public art between Venables and Broadway. One of the councillors behind the idea is Pete Fry. He says it's meant to transform the street into a destination from the traffic corridor that, is, that it is now. Charges have been laid after yesterday afternoon stabbing along the seawall near Vancouver's Sunset Beach. Police say it all started when a skateboarder ran into a jogger on the walking path. The jogger was fine and ran off. But some other people nearby confronted the skateboarder about using a different part of the path. Another man intervened and said he was stabbed multiple times. His injuries aren't life-threatening. A 25-year-old man is in custody. Unfortunately, this is something that we have seen a few times this month already in the same neighbourhood. This month alone, four violent incidences in and around downtown Vancouver beaches have occurred. There is absolutely no need whatsoever for anyone to carry a weapon on them at any time. If you were in the area and saw what happened yesterday afternoon, give police a call. A woman has serious injuries after a stabbing at the Vancouver Law Courts on Tuesday. According to police, two 53-year-old women were in court for a civil matter when one reportedly stabbed the other. Some of the courtrooms have security checks, but not all of them do. Weapons are banned from the building. The Attorney General's ministry is reviewing the incident to determine if security should be upgraded at the building. TransLink is telling us how ridership has fared during the pandemic. It says last fall, ridership was 41% of pre-COVID-19 levels across the network. The West Coast Express saw the biggest drop in users, retaining only 17% of the passengers it saw before the arrival of the virus. For 2020 as a whole, TransLink says it retained 43% of its ridership, second only to Los Angeles, when we look at transit systems here and in the U.S. I must report that we're not in better shape. We're actually in what I would describe as a, um, probably more dire strait. Earlier in the spring, the ambulance paramedics and dispatchers of BC said paramedic staffing had reached a crisis level, exacerbated by a toxic opioid crisis, mental health injuries and the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, they say things are just getting worse. Troy Clifford, president of the BC Ambulance Association, says ambulance wait times reached four to five hours in some areas last weekend, a symptom of what he says are continual administrative failures. But during this pandemic services week in Canada, Clifford has been happy to focus on the positive. Yes, you know, there's a lot of negativity around the staffing and workload and the pressures that they're under from a personal impact perspective. Uh, we, we know the psychological injuries uh, are happening and we're trying to really uh, focus on the positive and, you know, we're seeing a lot of thanks from the public. We're getting uh, messages from our colleagues in public safety and health. And that's really rewarding to just feel that uh, appreciation for us. And I guess that's really what this week is about. BC Emergency Health Services says at least 214 new permanent full-time positions with full wages have been created since fall 2020. To stand up to the Italian regime that had sided with Nazi Germany, that was right. But to scapegoat law-abiding Italian citizens, that was wrong. 
The Prime Minister Justin Trudeau delivering a formal apology for the country's internment of Italian Canadians during the Second World War 81 years ago. He says 31,000 Italian Canadians were labeled enemy aliens, then fingerprinted, scrutinized and forced to report to local registers once a month. More than 600 men were arrested and sent to internment camp, some for years. Four women were detained and sent to jail without formal charges. Trudeau noted that those who were interned did not turn their backs on Canada, but rather went on to help build it. Vancouver's news is always available on the radio with News 1130 or online anytime at citynews1130.com. Your next edition of City News is tonight at 11. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.